Hello, my name is Lisa Elvin Soltari, and this is my channel, Have Roots, Will Travel. I'm a genealogist and a passionate traveler. Over the last year, I've been doing these biographies of the Xi Jiwa, the founding mothers. Um, and uh, what started off as just a very personal little project has turned into a, um, a real project where I'm actually intent on doing all of them because it's only fair, right? So what we do every week um, is we take a couple of the Fijiwa, the founding mothers, and we kind of do a mini biography of their life story. So if this is one of your Fijiwa for this episode, great. If not, and you haven't found yours yet, please write to me and I will let you know if she's coming up or if I'm going to put her on the list or if I've already done her. You might want to look at my website, Have Roots Will Travel, because on in that on that website, I actually have all the links and everything like that to the upcoming and, and the past ones. So have a look at that just to see where I'm at. We are now on episode number 82. So we've done quite a bit of work uh, thus far. And as I mentioned, I have a website, but I also have a Facebook group as well. Have a look at that. And um, please feel free, like I say, to write any comments or questions. I'd be happy to um, respond. And I usually am pretty quick about doing so. So with that being said, let's get started. Find out who's our girl for the week. Li Fi Zhuhua, the king's daughter, was a program that was begun in 1663 by the intendant Jean Talon at the time. And um, I actually produced a video uh, called the, uh, the Program 2.0. Have a look at that if you need to know or want to know more about the actual program and, and what the girls had to go through in order to get to New France, um, what happened once they got here. All of that good stuff is contained in that, in that video. And with that, let's get started and find out who's our girl. So this week's lady is Marie Blanchard. She's actually not a request from a viewer. I don't have her in any of my files. And I just selected her because I liked her story and I wanted to share it. So, but if she is one of your um, great grandmothers, please let me know. I'll, I'll be delighted to know that I connected um, this, you know, this lady um, and, um, and found some descendants. So that would be really cool. So let's get to know Marie a little bit more. 49, she was born in the city of Rouen, Normandy. Um, and the church that she would have been baptized in would be saint Nicas. Um, her parents were Jean Blachat and Martine Lebas. Um, and, you know, Rouen is a city on the River Seine in northern France. It's the capital of the region of Normandy. And there is probably no better historical story than the one of Rouen. Uh, at one time, was the largest city in medieval Europe. It played a prominent role in both and French histories from the 11th to the 15th century. Joan of Arc was tried and burned alive here in 1431 in that area. Rouen is a city of cultural and educational significance. We have uh, the Museum of Fine Arts and the Rouen Cathedral are part of um, the history of this place. It was from this area uh, that the Statue of Liberty sailed in June of 1885. L'Armada, which is held every four to six years, is a gathering of sailing ships from around the world, which was begun in the 1980s. The next Armada will take place, we are told, in June of 2023. Each Armada has a theme, and the next one should be the Armada of Liberty. So that's kind of a neat connection, if you will. Um, truly, you can see that Rouen is probably one of those areas. Um, it's probably next to Ile d'Orléans, is probably the next one on my bucket list in terms of um, where I want to go to in France, just to see it. Um, probably La Rochelle and then Rouen, um, because so many of the Filles du Roi came from this area. 18, she emigrated to New France, bringing with her a dowry worth about 50 pounds. She sailed on the Saint Louis de Dieppe and she arrived September 25th 1667. Let's see who she selects and who selects her. Well, his name was Michel Mathieu Brunet dit Le Tang, and he was born about 1638 in the town called Tourove in Percy, uh, Saint-Jean-de-Ré in Percy, 
I should say. Uh, his parents were Jacques Brunet and Jacqueline Raquem. Um, and you can see a little bit of the church of where he would have been baptized. On the right is kind of what the, what the little village looks like to this day. And on the map, you can kind of see where in relationship to Harris and France and all of that is where he is from. Well, I can tell you they didn't waste much time because remember, she arrived September 25th. By November 10th, they were married. So obviously that was fast and furious. So we have um, Marie and Michel Mathieu married in Quebec City on November 10th, 1667. Where do they locate? So they would settle down in the um, Seigneurie of Champlain, which was uh, granted on August 8th, 1664. And uh, there had attempts to, to, um, to kind of build this land, but it, it really was a tough one because of the, um, the Indian uh, threat, if you will. Um, by 1666, the concessions were granted in the Seigneurie and people started moving there. Um, and so they would have been among the first um, families. Many of the very, very first families came from uh, three, Four Rivières, Three Rivers. Um, so the families of Antoine Desrosiers, Francois Chorel, and Pierre Dardonneau uh, are among the first, but certainly uh, uh, Marie and uh, uh, Michel Mathieu would have been uh, truly among the first because they got married in 1667, shortly after the concessions um, were started. And we have in 1681, uh, we have um, we have the census, and we have Michel, Mathieu Michel, um, 35 years old, his wife Marie, uh, their children, Michel, Jean, Marianne, Jean, Pierre, Marie, and um, Jacob. They have one cow. And they have 21 arpa. That's one of the largest we've seen. So 21 arpa is about 15 to 16 acres of land. Truly remarkable. So let's have a look at the family they created. They had 10 children. Michel married uh, Marie Madeleine Moisin and had eight children, five of whom made it to adulthood. He then married Anne Elizabeth Emerault and had three children, all of whom made it to adulthood. Jeanne married François Huard, but did not appear to have any children. Marianne married Antoine Pinot and had 12 children, 10 of whom made it to adulthood. Jean married Marie Perrier and had seven children, all of whom made it to adulthood. Pierre uh, would die in infancy. Marie married François Bigurat and had 13 children, 11 of whom made it to adulthood. Jacques married Jeanne Vernet and had one child, uh, who made it to adulthood before his untimely death at 28. Catherine married Honor Denis and had three children, both, all of whom made it to adulthood. Marguerite died at 17 and unfortunately Mathieu also died at 18. So now the family would move sometime around 1681, they would move to Montreal. So let's talk a little bit about this amazing city that I love. The wonderful city that would become Montreal started off as Ville-Marie by the founder, Paul de Chomedy, who was the Sire de Maisonneuve, and was essentially a, it was essentially a missionary center. Um, in May of 1642 is the official founding, if you will. The colony would not thrive and it was on the verge of extinction when Chamonix decided to return to France to recruit 100 settlers, which would be known as Le Grand Recruit, the, the large recruitment. From this small group would evolve the Notre Dame congregation uh, that Sister uh, Marguerite Bourgeois helped to, or founded. Uh, when Montreal was founded, the new colonists were rapidly confronted by uh, a terrible enemy, the Iroquois. Unfortunately, there was no regular army on the on Montreal soil until 1665, when the Carignasa Chalier Regiment landed there. Um, in the meantime, militias capable of resisting the Iroquois attacks were set up. Um, in 1663, Chamonix created the saint Famille militia to protect Ville-Marie and its inhabitants. It was made up of 139 voluntary colonists divided into 20 squads. A corporal was elected by the members of each squad. The saint Famille militia was headed by Zachary Dupuis, the future owner of the Fife of Verdun. So let's give you a little bit of that kind of history. 
So Michel Mathieu would go on to work with um, with Nicolas Perrault, work with, be a voyageur for five or six years. He would accumulate, um, you know, vast, uh, you know, obviously money, and would be one of those um, unsung heroes, if you will, in terms of the efforts that he did and and where he would go and travel. Um, to be able to um, feed his family. But that's also why there was like a gap in terms of, of the children born. Um, and so it's just remarkable that Marie would have, you know, had to tend to the family and be on her own for, you know, years at a time. So eventually the family would move to Verdun um, and would establish themselves as one of the pioneers of that area as well. So again, they seem to be, and I, I just think, find it remarkable, they went from Champlain to Ville-Marie to Verdun. He was involved with Nicolas Perrault and did so many of, the, of those amazing expeditions. Just a remarkable uh, life story. Unfortunately, that life did end for uh, Michel. He died on December 17, 1708. Uh, he's buried at the Hotel Dieu Chapel. Um, and um, he would have died in hospital, so he must have been suffering from some ailment. At that time, they would have been married in almost 40 years. Marie would, um, you know, stay on her own for about five years, but she would eventually remarry. His name was Yves Lucas de saint venant and they married in 1713. So Marie would have about nine years with her second husband. She would go on to die herself on 28th, uh, the 28th of July, 1722. She was about 73 years old. One of the reasons that I selected Medi is not only for the extraordinary life that they led, but she was among the top um, filles du roi. When I, made, I did a conference uh, you know, a while back where I actually listed the top 10 um, and she was up there in terms of the amount of descendants that she had. As of 1729, she and Michel Mathieu would have had 220 descendants as of 1729. So even though I never got this request from any of you, I know there must be descendants um, and can't wait to meet them. So um, that is a remarkable feat. Um, in and of itself, um, and and how many children she produced, and how many children they produce, and all of the above. So uh, with that, uh, she does earn her place in uh, in Fijian law history. And I want to also mention some of the Fijian law resources I use. La Société des Fijian Rois et Soldats du Carignan is a society that I belong to. I'm also the membership chair. Uh, even before I joined, I would use this website quite a bit for information. And now that I'm a member, obviously, there's a lot of areas uh, that are member only. So I would urge you to have a look at this um, particular uh, website and society and see if it's something you would be interested in joining. And then the next one is uh, the Facebook group um, called Les Filles du Roi Descendants. They have over 5,000 uh, members on that. And that is a wonderful place to meet uh, like-minded people. And then the third one I use is called a Migracion. And that is a website that I use just to confirm information, to just get, they've done so much research uh, on the Fiji uh, you, you really must use this and have a look at it. Um, and don't be afraid, you will get lost in the, in the details because there's so many, there's so much to explore on this website. That's all I got to say. You got to check it out. So, um, those are my top three, but of course I use lots more, but those are specifically designed for the Fiji Roi. So ends episode number 82, Marie Blanchard, truly a unique and a strong woman with 220 descendants as of 1729. Her and her husband would make an impact on three different towns. Um, he would uh, go on to explore parts of North America with Nicolas Perrault, which is a remarkable feat. And um, they were just truly the, the essence of pioneers. So if this is your descendancy, you can certainly be proud. And we thank Marie and Michel Mathieu for their contributions. And with that, I leave you until we see you again on episode number 83. Until then, au revoir.